What's up everybody, I'm Alessandro and welcome to The Standard Wrist. Today I am going to review the Hamilton Kaki Pilot Daydate Automatic 42. But before that, of course, customary wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Seiko Sarb 035. It's been quite a few days that I didn't wear this one, but it is still one of my favorite watches in my collection. I really like the subdued appearance of this watch. Very versatile, you can wear this casually and in a business environment, no problem can wear this in a dressier occasion as well. And if you want to do that, you just have to swap for a leather strap or something like that. It looks awesome. You have that subtle sunburst effect that you can see with this light actually. And of course, I will link the original video where I review this watch right there. But onto today's subject, the review of the Hamilton Kaki Pilot Daydate Automatic 42. So of course, you might know this baby from the Interstellar movie because this is the watch that Matthew McConaughey is wearing during the whole movie. And actually, I saw this watch before I saw the movie and I was kind of drawn to this dial. But when I saw that Matthew McConaughey was wearing it because it's one of my favorite movies, I just have to get one. But why this one specifically? You know, you can have this watch with a quartz movement. I just happen to prefer automatic watches. And you have also a 45 millimeters version, which of course will be huge on my six inch wrist, but there's a huge difference between both of them. Whereas the 45 millimeters version and the previous 38 millimeters version had the day and date at three o'clock. This one has the day at 12 o'clock and the date at six o'clock. And you guys know that having the day at 12 o'clock is my favorite complication of them all, just followed afterward by the GMT hand. But this is exactly why I wanted to have this watch because I think it looks luxurious and rugged at the same time. You have that pilot uh, vibe. At the same time, you have something that you can wear in many occasions. Of course, being a 42 millimeters watch, it's a big watch for my wrist, that's true, but the lug to lug distance is quite short, meaning that I can still put it off. But you know what? Let's jump right into it. And here it is in all its glory. This dial is magnificent. I really like those Aragmic numerals that really reflect the light, but I will be talking about this in just a few seconds. Of course, let's get the dimensions out of the way. So this watch is advertised to be a 42 millimeters watch, but as you can see, every time I measure it, it's more like 42.3 millimeters. And I measure it, as you can see, from two to eight, which is the smallest part of the case. It has a lug to lug distance of 48 millimeters, which is still manageable for a small wrist. And this is why I say it's a watch for a small wrist and not, of course, a small watch. It has a thickness of 12 millimeters, which helps with the actual size of the watch because being not too thick, it's still manageable under a cuff. It has a 20 millimeters lug width that tapers down to 18 millimeters where it meets the clasp. Okay, onto the watch and I can stare at this dial for hours. Those Arabic numerals that reflect the light are very nice. Sometimes though, you just don't see them when the light hits the dial with a particular angle, they totally disappear. Now, these are reflective metal parts, whereas the actual hour indices right here and the minute track are painted. This is actually a loom. It's painted right on the dial. So you can still read the time, no problem, because as you can see, the hands are kind of semi-skeletonized. We can always see that minute track on the outside. Sometimes you just don't see the Arabic numerals, but all of a sudden, when the light hits the dial with the right angle, boom, they pop like this. This is beautiful. I really like it. And of course, as you guys know, I really like the look of the watch, but I got it mainly because it has the day at 12 o'clock. I really like this complication. I think it looks awesome, really cool. The good thing is because the day is at 12 and the date is at six. The dial is very balanced. And this is not the case on the 38 millimeters version, which is the previous one and the 45 millimeters version who both happen to have the day and the date here at three o'clock. This one I think is the most balanced of them all. So this might look like a mate or a shiny black dial, but it's not. Actually, this is a sunburst dial, as you can see right here, but you have to have a direct light hitting the dial like this. Uh, typically, in a sunny day, you will see that. Uh, you will not see this when you are wearing this watch inside. It's more like a shimmer and not an in-your-face sunburst effect, but I really like it because it is subdued. Now, one of the things that I don't like about this watch is, I don't know if it's about the crystal or the dial or the, uh, numerals, but when you have the light hitting the dial, 
directly, sometimes you just can't see anything on this watch. So most of the time the light will hit the dial with an angle, meaning that you can read the time no problem. Of course, those numerals will not always look the same, but that's the cool thing. But sometimes, boom, in full cell light, you will not see anything, just this kind of pale, gray, and really hard to tell the time. But on the inside, most of the time, it will look like this. And as soon as the light hits the dial with the right angle, well, boom, those hour markers with the Arabic numerals will pop. And I bet that you will play with this all the time and trying to catch the light. I do this all the time. One of the things that I really like about this watch is also the hour markers inside the dial. So because you have those skeletonized hands, even if I hit nine o'clock, you can still see that nine peeking through that hour hand. I think it's a very cool touch. And you know, it's, it's, it's a kind of hand that you don't see everywhere. It's of course, it is shaped as a pilot hand, but at the same time, skeletonized, I think it's a very nice touch. I really like it. So as usual, let's have a little loom shot compared to my SKX 013. And you will see that this thing is bright. It's kind of the same uh, loom that you have on the SKX, maybe just a tiny bit lower, but not by much. Uh, I've been able to see the time on this watch all night long, no problem. So if that's something that's important to you, well, it will work, no problem. You will be able to see the time all night long. And especially when you come back from a sunny day outside and you get inside, this thing blows your mind. Okay, onto the case. And this is one part of the watch that I think really helps with the luxurious appearance. If you look at the details that you have on this case, it is magnificent. You have that polished sides that look awesome. That bevel right there with a high polish and again, that brushed side right there. I think it's a very nice combination. You have that small, but you know, very high polished as well bezel, which looks awesome. From this angle, you can see that the crystal is ever so slightly domed. It is a sapphire crystal, by the way. So there you have it. Very nice work on the actual case of this watch. Also, the shape of the case is great because it hugs the wrist quite a lot. You will see that on my wrist shot. And of course, you have that crown with the sign H, um, which is always a cool touch, I think. But this is not the part that I look at the most when I want to enjoy the case. This is really here that I think most things happen that bevel right there, it's a very nice touch. You can really catch the light, it is beautiful. And actually you can find the same kind of finish on the bracelet. As you can see, most of the bracelet is brushed, but then you have those high polished part right there that really set the shape of that square right there and they catch the light as well. So that's a very nice light play here on the bracelet. Now, the bracelet in itself make the watch looks even bigger than it actually is for a reason. Most of the time when you have a 42 millimeters watch, you will get a 21 or 22 millimeters bracelet, but this one is 20, so it's thinner compared to the case. So it makes the case appear even bigger than it actually is. Overall, the quality of the bracelet is great. You have solid links, solid end links as well. The clasp is very well machined and very well finished. You have that Hamilton logo and brand right there. It's a simple clasp that really simply, well, closes just like that. You have three micro adjustments. And again, the sign Hamilton clasp right there. It is a very nice looking bracelet and very comfortable as well. Um, the only thing is it cannot bend this way. So when you will put this one on the table, it, it, it will stand, you know, just like that. But that doesn't change the fact that this bracelet is actually very comfortable to wear and I think very good looking. You have at the same time the ruggedness and luxurious appearance. That's a very nice work from Hamilton right there and I think it suits the vibe of the watch. Now, unlike many other watches that are reviews, the first lugs right here, they actually stick out of the case. And when you get this measurement, you get almost 53.3 millimeters, but you will see that it's still working on my wrist. You know, it's just like a bigger G-Shock. It's still working even if this very dimension is big. Onto the movement. So this is a hand winding movement, a hacking movement as well, as you can see right here. And when you come to the first position, you can obviously change well, the date at the bottom and the day at the top. When you go past midnight, it will change the day and the date instantaneously. Mine happens to change just a few minutes before midnight. Check this out. Boom. 
Sandy. So this watch is powered by the Hamilton H30 movement, which is based off an ETA 2834-2 movement. They just changed some part inside to make this one kind of a Powermatic 80 movement because this one has a power reserve of 80 hours. I actually timed mine exactly at 80 hours. When it comes to accuracy, mine is gaining 10 seconds a day, more or less, which I think is always good to have a watch that gains some time and not loses because, well, if that's happened, you just pull out the crown, you wait 10 seconds, and then you push it back in. Now that I'm speaking about the crown, as you can see, it is not a screw down crown. It is just this kind of push and pull crown. So this one gets a water resistance of 100 meters, but you get that sapphire crystal on the back to actually have a look at the movement, which I think looks okay. It looks good. For some reason, I think that the rotor of this watch looks actually pretty good and the overall design of the case back also. So it's kind of a pleasure to look at this movement every now and then. Most of the time, I don't care about having an exhibition case back, but I think this one is a great addition to the watch because you get to enjoy it and it looks better than most entry-level automatic pieces. Of course, this one is not being considered an entry-level piece. Okay, let's put this bad boy on my wrist and of course, the vibe will be totally different from my Sarb 035. Let's check that out. There we go. So as you can see, of course, it's a bigger watch, but still the lock to lock distance fits within my wrist width. So it's a big watch, of course, but it's still working. It is kind of comfortable, maybe not the most comfortable watch I've ever worn, but as you can see, because of the shape of the lugs, it kind of hugs the wrist. So it helps a little bit with comfort. And I think it looks it looks great, actually. It's a, it's a very nice watch. So this is how it's gonna look like when you're gonna look at the time yourself. And as usual, a little wrist roll for you guys. And so here it is on my six inch wrist as seen from a distance. As you can see, of course, it's a bigger watch being a 42 millimeters watch, but the lock to lock distance is quite small for such a watch to the point where, well, when I stand right behind it, I cannot see the locks. I think I can still pull this one off, no problem, because you know, it's a pilot watch and pilot watches tend to be bigger. It's still working on my wrist. And so I think it works just fine. Now, you guys know that I like to rate my watches depending on five factors, so here we go. Is it straightforward? Well, I cannot give this one a five out of five because you have that hour circle on the inside. With the hours, you have those big Arabic numerals on each and every hour marker. You have the day at the top, the date at the bottom. There's quite a lot of things going on, but they managed to do that in a proper way that doesn't look too cluttered. So I will give this one a four out of five. Does it stand out? Well, I will have to give this one a five out of five, mainly for two reasons. One, it's a big watch, so for sure you cannot miss it on my small wrist. Second, when the, the light actually hits the dial with the right angle, you have those Arabic numerals that really pops and that is so satisfying to look at. Nonetheless, you still keep that pilot vibe that is really strong with this piece, so this one, five out of five. Is it refined? Well, you might think that this is not the most refined watch when it comes to watches in general, but for a pilot watch, it is. I would give this one a five out of five because when you look at all the details on the bracelet, the brushed bevels, the Arabic numerals that pop with the light, all these small details that I really like, I think it really does a good job being refined for a pallet watch. So this one gets a five out of five. Is it comfortable? This one was really hard because of course being a bigger watch on my wrist is not as comfortable as something as my SAR 035. That cannot happen. I was hesitating between three and four. I will have to give this one a three because it's kind of chunky. It's a big watch and you can feel it on your wrist even after a few minutes or after a few hours, you know that you have this watch on your wrist. So it's not the most comfortable one. So this one, three out of five. Now on to the most important factor of them all for me, and that is the what the hell factor. And I will give happily this one a five out of five. You know, it's a big watch. It's a watch with a lot of presence and I feel some 
satisfaction wearing this one for some reason. I know a lot of you guys prefer smaller watches and I do understand, but this is why I have this channel actually and I'm always talking about watches for Smorris and not only small watches. And that is a good example of a watch that you can wear and that is bigger because it's part of its function being a pilot watch. It's part of the trends too, that's true, but I really get a lot of satisfaction and fun wearing this watch. Of course, I don't want to wear it all the time because of the comfort, but when I have to choose uh, with some Thing with a lot of presents, this one is high on my list. So this one gets a five out of five for the what the hell factor. And so overall, this watch gets a very nice 88% as being a match for my collection. As you guys know, I try to find watches that are 80% or more to keep in my collection. And you know, the best case scenario would be 90% or more. This one is almost there. I think this one will be a keeper, even if it's a bigger watch. And of course, as usual, you will find a link in the description below if you want to get this cracking Hamilton Khaki Pilot Day Date Automatic 42 for yourself. Now guys, if you like this video, well, please hit that like button and let me know in the comments what do you think of this Hamilton Khaki Pilot Day Day. Do you have one? Do you enjoy one? If that's the case, what is your wrist size? This is very important for everybody. And what do you think of having a watch that is kind of bigger, but still managed to work on a smaller wrist in general? Because I know that a lot of you guys uh, love to have smaller watches and not only guys with small wrists and that's okay. But what do you guys think about having a bigger watch? I'm very comfortable wearing one. I don't care all that much. Of course, I wouldn't go overboard with something huge. I think this is as big as it can get, but you know, share with everybody in the comment section below. If you want to stay tuned about reviews, lists, watches for small wrists and watches in general, because that's what we like around here. Well, subscribe to the channel and check the little bell icon so you get notified as soon as I post a new video. And in the meantime, thank you so much for dropping by. Stay stylish and keep watching.